Uh, we're talking today to Frank Pullis, who is the uh, executive chairman of Magnus Energy Technology, ASX code MNS. Now, Frank, you've just had some significant announcements this week, one of which uh, you announced um, some funding from two significant investors of $20 million, one of which was uh, from John Hancock, who's the son of Gina Reinhardt, of course. Now, Hancock's been very successful as an early investor in Vulcan. What attracted him and the, your other funding partner to Magnus? Thanks, Tim. Uh, it was pr pretty much on the back of uh, our New York project. I think that's a, that was a, a main draw card uh, for these investors uh, to come into Magnus itself. Uh, they uh, were quite um, surprised how uh, near-term production um, or how close we were to near-term production out of our New York uh, lithium-ion battery plant. And so, yeah, in short, it, it was all around a New York battery plant that uh, brought these investors in. And it's great to have uh, local New York-based uh, investors in, uh, who are, you know, getting behind a New York project. And one of the reasons we also chose both of those um, groups it was purely because uh, apart from uh, the, the the option that was put forward to us, which we thought was attractive, uh, we th these groups can also open uh, a lot of doors for us um, in the uh, investment community in New York as well. So that that was a, another big draw card for us. Frank, now as part of that twenty million dollar investment, you announced to the ISX you're investing thirteen million dollars into your New York battery gigafactory. Um, can you tell us about the, can you explain the ownership structure in that, in that um, battery factory that you own and how you'll realise value from that asset moving forward? So when it comes to the battery plant, um, pretty much, well, Ma Magnus is the major shareholder of it. C4V, the technology provider, uh, is also a large shareholder. And between Magnus and uh, C4V, there's roughly about 95% ownership between the two parties. Uh, then there's a couple of um, minority uh, shareholders in the project, one being Riverstone Capital, who provided us with the debt piece. Uh, and then you've got a, a group that provides uh, cathode materials in primate precision uh, materials and uh, CND uh, Assembly, who provides battery management systems out of New York as well. So that's the ownership structure. In regards to uh, the board's thoughts in this last investment, uh, that came on the back of, uh, we believe, and, and answering the second part of your question, we're looking at a listing in the US, um, in New York. We think that's where we'll get the greatest valuation uh, for, uh, the, for the actual company itself. Secondly, uh, we also think it will help us with our growth plans. We want to scale up to double-digit gigawatt-hour production. And we think uh, by listing in the US, uh, that gives us the best chance. So from a Magnus point of view and from where the board was coming from, we thought this was actually an opportunity to increase our stake uh, in IM3 New York uh, prior to any listing. And that would be advantageous to our shareholders going forward. Frank, post that uh, uh, funding announcement, um, you've also announced today that uh, your you provide an update on your activities inside the uh, battery plant. And you've also announced uh, total binding sales agreements now of a little below $1 billion uh, Australian dollars. Um, when do you kind of get into near term production and when do the, when do these sales agreements turn into revenues? Yeah, Tim. So the, with the update, as uh, a lot of your um, listeners may have seen, uh, they, it was a update to show that, our production uh, in New York is getting closer. Uh, total um, construction is now uh, at 17.85% complete. Uh, we also announced those contracts, as you mentioned, and with those contracts, they kick in next year. Uh, the, the market is very tight at the moment. So if we're able to get our production happening sooner, we've got um, no issues and uh, from the binding off takers that they would take our sales early as well. Uh, so it, it's up to us to make sure we meet our time frames uh, to get into production as soon as possible. And then we'll start bringing those revenues in. Uh, at the end of this year, 
once we get to that semi-autonomous scale, uh, that's when we start hitting, you know, semi-serious um, production numbers. And by about March of, or April of next year, we start um, getting all, uh, fully automated production happening. And as the year goes on, uh, it, we will start hitting gigawatt hour um, scale. So, which is, which is really serious in the marketplace. Uh, but as I mentioned before, uh, with some of the um, uh, uh, funding opportunities uh, we're looking at from listings and so on, the aim is to scale up very quickly. Um, and I think we mentioned on our last interview as well, uh, we are speaking to groups in the US government groups in regards to funding there as well uh, to help us grow exponentially. And that's the aim from our side, but it's actually getting really exciting. And by the end of this year, we'll have that semi-automated production. Frank, of course, that today's announcement was a government contract, a 74 million US government contract. Um, for, for investors, can you, can you give us more details on the, on the applications of, of your batteries and your cells and, and how they're used and who can use them? So in regards to the main industries around lithium ion batteries or cells, you pretty much have uh, the energy stationary storage market. You also have the EV or sort of transportation market as well. Regards to the contracts that we have to date, the majority of those are in the energy stationary storage um, side of things. Uh, and that also includes today's one and uh, some, some of the others that we've spoken about previously. In saying that, we are in discussions with some large household names uh, groups who are in the EV space uh, and also uh, quite large groups in the energy storage space, whether it's home batteries or batteries for you know, large buildings or for grid applications. Uh, we're working hard to secure those. Uh, we've been going through qualification processes and, and, and the way it works normally, in order to get these agreements like the ones we've announced today, you usually go through a testing phase or a qualification phase that at times goes for two years, it may go for even longer. Uh, so we are working with a number of groups. You could see the, also the attraction where we've got a non-China battery supply chain uh, and you're producing these things in the US. Uh, so obviously, you know, key targets will be these US-based companies uh, who are looking at local supply and, and we're one of those few that can supply it um, and even you know, even um, rarer with a non-China supply chain as well. Frank, I was talking to our EV battery analysts the other day and what I underestimated was what a significant player China is in the EV uh, supply chain. And that is something that the US sees as potentially a security risk. Can you talk to uh, the significance of the US wanting to own uh, their battery chain and, and what that means for potential government funding for Magnus? Look, they, they are the leader by far, and there's no doubt about it. And uh, we've seen uh, Europe, for instance, there's a number of plants that are being built. I think the last um, count was sort of around 50 that are being built, and the US have fallen behind in this space. Uh, we've, we've seen in, and we've discussed previously, President Biden's uh, infrastructure bill and roughly 20 billion set aside for cell manufacturers. The government sees the need and the importance of it, and hence why um, IM3 New York is winning contracts like uh, today's announcement, uh, where we've secured another government contract. It is really important. The supply chain is utterly important uh, to make sure it's secure um, and there's sort of that um, independence from China. So that, that's something that we see as being a, a huge advantage uh, for us in moving forward, especially with these government contracts, but also working with uh, some of these groups out of the US, whether it's EV makers or large household names who are looking at uh, security around their cell supply going forward.